وبروح الطبع تعاون بين الرئاسات الستة للمؤتمر وتعمل سوريا أن تشكل هذه الانطلاقة في الدورة الحالية خطوة جدية نحو التوافق على برنامج عمل شامل ومتوازن يمكن المؤتمر من استئناف عمله المضمون واستعادة ولايته التفاوضية مع إدراكنا لحجم التعقيدات المتصلة بالقضايا المدرجة على جدول أعمال المؤتمر وانعكاسات البيئة الأمنية الدولية التي تتسم بالهشاشة وبالتوترات السياسية والعسكرية المتصاعدة في العديد من مناطق العالم وفي هذا المجال تشجب سوريا إصرار الولايات المتحدة وحلفائها على افتعال الأزمة الأوكرانية لتهديد الأمن, السلب الأمن القومي لروسيا الاتحادية وتدين تصعيدها المفتعل للتوترات مع روسيا من أجل إحياء دور حلف الناتو وتوسيع نطاقه بما يهدد الاستقرار العالمي ويخاطر بإطلاق سباق تسلح يشمل الأسلحة التقليدية وغير التقليدية ويزيد من نشوب من أخطار نشوب حرب واسعة النطاق بما فيها الحرب النووية السيدة الرئيس تتعرض سوريا منذ أكثر من أحد عشر عاما ولا تزال لحرب إرهابية غير مسبوقة مولتها وسلحتها ووجهتها حكومات دول وأطراف إقليمية ودولية معروفة للنيل من الدولة السورية وتقويض استقرارها ووحدتها وسلامة أراضيها وتهديد حياة مواطنيها في انتهاك سافر للقانون الدولي ولميثاق الأمم المتحدة ولقرارات مجلس الأمن ذات الصلة بمكافحة الإرهاب ومع استمرار تنظيمي داعش وجبهة النصرة وغيرهما وغيرهما من الكيانات الإرهابية المرتبطة بالقاعدة بتهديد الأمن والاستقرار في عدد من دول المنطقة وخارجها فإن مخاطر وصول هذه التنظيمات الإرهابية إلى امتلاك وتطوير وتخزين واستخدام أسلحة دمار شامل بما فيها الأسلحة الكيميائية هو مصدر قلق حقيقي يتوجب مواجهته بعيدا عن التوظيف السياسي والتضليل الإعلامي وانطلاقا من ذلك تجدد سوريا تأييدها لبدء التفاوض في مؤتمر نزع السلاح على مشروع اتفاقية لمنع الإرهاب الكيميائي والبيولوجي استفادا إلى استنادا إلى النص المقترح من الاتحاد الروسي وعلى التوازي مع مخاطر الإرهاب تستمر إسرائيل في زعزعة الاستقرار في منطقتنا وتهديد السلم والأمن الدوليين عبر إصرارها على تكريس احتلالها غير قانوني للأراضي العربية المحتلة وإمعانها في ممارسة أعمال العدوان والاعتداءات المتكررة على الأراضي السورية وخلق, وخلق قرارات مجلس الأمن بما فيها قرار المجلس رقم 350 لعام 1974 حول فضل الاشتباك وأود أن أؤكد هنا أن هذه الاعتداءات الإسرائيلية لن تبقى من دون رد وأن ممارسة إسرائيل لإرهاب الدولة ولأعمال العدوان واحتلالها الاستعماري للأراضي العربية المحتلة في فلسطين والجولان ما كانت لتستمر لولا التغاضي الدولي والحماية الأمريكية لإسرائيل من المساءلة عن انتهاكاتها المستمرة لقواعد القانون الدولي وميثاق الأمم المتحدة واستهتارها بقرارات مجلس الأمن السيدة الرئيس إن استمرار إسرائيل في تحديث وتوسيع ترساناتها من الأسلحة التقليدية وغير التقليدية وفي امتلاك وتطوير برامج أسلحة دمار شامل وقدرات عسكرية نووية بعيدا عن أي رقابة دولية وبدعم غير مشروط من الولايات المتحدة وحلفائها الأوروبيين وتزويد إسرائيل بأحدث أنواع الأسلحة والتكنولوجيا العسكرية المتطورة يشكل مصدر تهديد دائم وجدي للأمن والسلم الدوليين في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وفي ظل سياسة الاسترضاء والتسويف التي تنتهج هذه الدول تستمر إسرائيل في كونها العائق الوحيد أمام إنشاء هذه المنطقة مع استمرار رفضها الانضمام كطرف غير نووي إلى معاهدة عدم الانتشار ورفضها لإخضاع منشآتها النووية لنظام الضمانات الشامل للوكالة الدولية للطاقة الذرية ورفضها الانضمام لأي من الاتفاقيات الأساسية التي تم التفاوض عليها في مؤتمر نزع السلاح بشأن أسلحة الدمار الشامل وفي الوقت الذي تشارك فيه سوريا ودول المنطقة بفعالية في مؤتمر إنشاء المنطقة الخالية من الأسلحة النووية وكافة أسلحة الدمار الشامل في الشرق الأوسط الذي عقد دورته الثانية بمقر الأمم المتحدة في نيويورك في تشرين الثاني 2021 
فان امتناع اسرائيل والولايات المتحده عن حضور المؤتمر الذي ينعقد تحت رايه الامم المتحده يشكل استهتارا واضحا بالاراده الدوليه والاقليميه الراميه لانشاء المنطقه الخاليه في الشرق الاوسط. ومع تطلعنا الى انعقاد المؤتمر العاشر لاستعراض معاهده عدم الانتشار النووي في موعده الجديد تامل سوريا بان يوفر المؤتمر القادم فرصه جاده للتوافق وللمضي قدما في تنفيذ التعهدات والالتزامات التي حددتها الاتفاقيه والوثائق الختاميه وقرارات مؤتمر الاستعراض استعراض المعاهده وبشكل خاص ما يتعلق بانشاء منطقه خاليه من الاسلحه النوويه واسلحه الدمار الشامل الاخرى في الشرق الاوسط وتجدد سوريا التاكيد في هذا المجال على ان تنفيذ قرار الشرق الاوسط الذي تم اعتماده كجزء من صفقه التمديد اللانهائي لمعاهدة منع الانتشار عام 1995 يظل ساريا إلى حين نفاله السيدة الرئيس ترحب سوريا بالتقدم المحرز نحو التوصل إلى اتفاق في محادثات فيينا حول العودة إلى تطبيق اتفاق خطة العمل الشامل المشتركة مع الجمهورية الإسلامية الإيرانية وتؤيد سوريا الموقف الإيراني بأن نجاح المحادثات يتوقف على اتخاذ الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وحلفائها الأوروبيين للخطوات اللازمة بشأن النقاط العالقة وعلى تقديم ضمانات برفع التدابير القسرية الأحادية التي لا تتماشى مع الاتفاق والالتزام بعدم إعادة فرضها على الشعب الإيراني كعنصر أساسي من خطوات إعادة تطبيق خطة العمل الشاملة المشتركة ختاما السيد الرئيس تتطلب مواجهة المخاطر الدولية الراهنة إعادة الاعتبار إلى سيادة القانون الدولي وميثاق الأمم المتحدة وتنفيذ الالتزامات الثنائيه والمتعدده ومتعدده الاطراف في مجال نزع السلاح النووي ومنع الانتشار وضبط التسلح بعيدا عن المعايير المزدوجه والتوظيف السياسي. وفي هذا المجال يكتسي تفعيل دور مؤتمر نزع السلاح اهميه خاصه بوصفه المنتدى التفاوض الدولي الوحيد متعدد الاطراف المعني بنزع السلاح لا سيما في مجال نزع السلاح النووي الذي يشكل هلة وجود المؤتمر وسوريا على قناعة بأن قدرة المؤتمر على التقدم باتجاه الخروج من حالة المراهنة المراوحة والجمود ستعتمد إلى حد كبير على الاسترشاد بالنظام الداخلي لمؤتمر نزل السلاح وبمبادئ المساواة في السيادة والتوافق التي نص عليها واحترام مبدأ الأمن المتساوي وغير المنقوص لجميع الدول وتجنب تسييس مداولات المؤتمر واحترام ولايته ودوره بعيدا عن الجدالات العقيمة من خارج جدول أعماله شكرا لكم Muchas gracias señor su excelencia ministro Megdad por su intervención la conferencia ahora escuchará a su excelencia el honorable Phil Twyford ministro de desarme y control de armas de Nueva Zelanda a través de un video pregrabado. ¿Tiene la palabra su excelencia? Enga mana, enga reo, tēnā koutou katoa. I first recorded a somber but hopeful statement for this meeting two weeks ago. But Russia's aggression has necessitated a new message, one that wholeheartedly rejects its attempts to drag us all away from civility and closer to the abyss. New Zealand condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's illegal invasion and occupation of Ukraine. This reckless and cynical breach of the UN Charter has already cost too many lives and could see many more lost as conflict continues. I repeat the calls of my Prime Minister, Foreign Minister and many other international leaders for Russia to immediately cease military operations in Ukraine, to permanently withdraw its troops and end the pointless loss of innocent life. New Zealand is deeply disturbed by President Putin's thinly veiled threats of nuclear retaliation against those that would seek to stand in Russia's way. Our concern intensified by his subsequent move to place Russia's nuclear deterrence on high alert. 
This irresponsible and destabilizing act increases the risk of miscalculation with catastrophic consequences for humanity, consequences that would cross borders and generations. And this from a president who just two months ago joined the leaders of the other NPT nuclear weapon states to reiterate that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We urge Russia to cease its dangerous nuclear rhetoric and to return to a diplomatic path with urgency. Nuclear weapons must never be used again under any circumstances. In the short space of one week, Russia has put at risk decades of diplomacy on nuclear non-proliferation. It has hollowed out negative security assurances and incentivized the proliferation of nuclear weapons. All states must abide by their international obligations. They must comply with international humanitarian law at all times. No state is above the law. I'm deeply concerned at reports of cluster munitions use by Russia in the current conflict. As a strong supporter of the Convention on Cluster Munitions, New Zealand condemns any use of these inhumane weapons and urges all parties to the conflict not to use them. The protection of Ukraine's civilian population must be the highest priority. The use of explosive weapons in Ukraine's cities and towns must be avoided at all costs. I had wished to focus my remarks today on the importance of achieving a positive outcome on nuclear disarmament at the 10th NPT Review Conference. Doing so will require concrete steps to be taken by the nuclear weapon states in fulfilment of their Article 6 obligations and their unequivocal undertaking to achieve the total elimination of nuclear weapons. Recent events have made all too clear the horrifying consequences that could await us if this is, once again, kicked down the road. And so I urge all countries, and the nuclear weapon states in particular, to come to the review conference committed to achieving progress. The time for concrete action, and action that goes well beyond the joint P5 statement issued in January, is now. I refer you to my written statement, which will be circulated, and which features New Zealand's views on the broader range of issues on the agenda of this conference, and of importance to countries committed to disarmament and non-proliferation. Key among these is New Zealand's strong support for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. We encourage all states to join us at the TPNW's first meeting of states' parties later this year as members, signatories or observers. I wish to end with a call to action for this body. A crisis like the one before us demands an effective response. New Zealand doesn't dispute the value of kōrero, discussion and debate, in bringing states and peoples together. But we need more than talk. It is well past the time for the Conference on Disarmament to fulfil its negotiating mandate and for us all to demonstrate political will and flexibility to bring us back to the negotiating table. Muchas gracias a su excelencia, Dr. Phil Tyward, Ministro de Desarme y Control de Armas de Nueva Zelanda. La conferencia ahora escuchará el mensaje de su excelencia, señor Nasser Bourita, Ministro de Relaciones Exteriores, Cooperación Africana y Expatriados, de Marruecos a través de un mensaje pregrabado. Bienvenido, señor ministro. Madame la Presidente, Madame la Secrétaire Générale de la Conférence du Désarmement, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, j'ai tenu à prendre part à ce segment de haut niveau de la Conférence du Désarmement pour réitérer formellement la puissante réserve du Royaume du Maroc aux efforts de notre instance, distinguée par l'unicité de son mandat dans le système des Nations Unies. Mon pays réitère également 
son soutien aux initiatives multilatérales dans le cadre des Nations Unies, visant à freiner la course aux armements, renforcer l'efficacité des accords de limitation des armements et de désarmement, et relancer les mécanismes multilatéraux et soutenir l'action de la communauté internationale en vue de prévenir la prolifération des armes nucléaires et éliminer les armes de destruction massive. Le Royaume du Maroc appelle, rappelle en outre son attachement au principe de non-recours à la force pour le règlement des différends entre les États et encourage toutes les initiatives et actions favorisant un règlement pacifique des conflits. La conférence du désarmement est le lieu idoine pour porter ce message. Mais j'en conviens avec vous tous, la conférence du désarmement ne sert pas qu'à réaffirmer des engagements. Il sert à les avancer continuellement, étant l'unique instance onusienne habilitée à négocier des instruments juridiques sur le désarmement. Mais force est de constater qu'il faut remonter à 1996 pour retrouver la dernière contribution significative de la conférence du désarmement à la consolidation de l'édifice juridique international. Depuis cette date, la conférence n'est pas parvenue à retrouver le rôle et la place qui devraient être les siens. Pourtant, notre conférence a été conçue pour être l'unique organe de négociation des Nations Unies en matière de désarmement. Sa légitimité, son expertise et son mandat sont incontournables. Nul ne peut le nier. La conférence du désarmement est un acquis précieux pour la communauté internationale. Pour aller de l'avant, il faut sans doute cesser de porter un regard nostalgique sur l'histoire et l'âge d'or de cette conférence afin d'envisager le présent et l'avenir de cet organe avec pragmatisme mais aussi avec ambition. Les lignes de fracture qui empêchent au sein de cette conférence l'émergence d'une volonté politique consensuelle pour aller de l'avant ne doivent pas nous décourager. Il nous faut tirer les leçons du passé et ne pas attendre des cataclysmes majeurs ou des conflagrations historiques pour prendre à bras le corps le rôle qui doit être le nôtre. Le contexte actuel ne le rappelle malheureusement avec force. À ce jour, le système multilatéral en matière de désarmement reste malheureusement beaucoup plus réactif qu'anticipatif. Nous réagissons collectivement trop souvent, et l'histoire le montre, uniquement lorsque des événements majeurs se sont déjà produits. C'est l'enseignement qu'il faut retenir. Et fort de cet enseignement, nous n'avons plus le droit à l'erreur. En premier lieu, il faut réitérer notre foi sincère et profonde dans les vertus de la négociation et du multilatéralisme. Le multilatéralisme est l'autre nom de la paix. La négociation est l'unique outil qui permet la résolution de tous les différents de manière pacifique. Le Royaume du Maroc croit profondément dans les vertus de la négociation et du système multilatéral. L'histoire de mon pays, sa géographie, les choix décisifs pris par Sa Majesté le Roi Mohamed VI, notamment en matière de politique étrangère, illustrent la vocation du Royaume du Maroc et son rapport à son environnement régional et international. Le Maroc est une force de paix, comme le montre l'action qui a été la sienne dans différents conflits dans le monde, proche et lointain, comme aussi aujourd'hui encore le rôle sage et constructif qu'il joue dans la résolution de la crise libyenne c'est que la vocation du Maroc est celle du, de rassembler, d'unir et de fédérer. Cette vocation, qui est aussi une ambition volontariste, nous l'avons toujours mise à, à la disposition de cette conférence et nous continuerons à le faire. En second lieu, l'impression que les questions de désarmement et de non-prolifération n'ont plus la même priorité dans l'agenda des Nations Unies est totalement fausse. Certes, ces dernières années, nos efforts collectifs ont été davantage mobilisés par le changement climatique, la migration, la sécurité sanitaire ou alimentaire. Mais ces préoccupations ne sont pas une négation de l'objectif premier de paix et de sécurité internationale. Au contraire, 
toutes ces questions fondamentales et essentielles participent de façon directe ou indirecte à la paix et à la sécurité internationale. Pour autant, il nous appartient aussi à présent de remettre les questions de désarmement et de non-prolifération au sommet de nos priorités. Le Maroc est déterminé à apporter sa contribution aux efforts collectifs de la communauté internationale, comme l'illustre sa présidence à New York de la première commission de l'Assemblée générale au cours de sa 76e session, de l'OIAC à l'AE, mais aussi à Vienne, à l'occasion de la présidence de l'Assemblée générale de l'AIEA, ou encore actuellement du groupe des 77. Notre engagement dans différents fora, à La Haye, New York, Genève et Vienne, ainsi que sur le plan régional et bilatéral, avec certains partenaires, montre la détermination qui est la nôtre de contribuer inlassablement à construire un monde plus sûr et plus stable. En troisième lieu, il est certain que le décalogue de 79 et le texte fondateur du comité du désarmement, devenu conférence de désarmement en 1984. Cependant, comme tout, le, tout, le, tout document, le décalogue n'est pas gravé sur du marbre. Sa force réside dans sa dimension consensuelle et référentielle et sa pertinence dans son potentiel à une conjoncture internationale plus chargée que jamais en défis globaux. D'où la nécessité de se départir de l'approche dogmatique qui a présidé ces dernières années à la perception de la problématique du modus operandi de la réalisation de ses objectifs et de son plan d'action. L'histoire retiendra moins le lyrisme de nos engagements en faveur du désarmement que notre impuissance à surmonter nos divergences, à appréhender les menaces actuelles, à faire preuve de réalisme et de lucidité nos échecs successifs à adopter notre programme de travail recèlent les germes de l'affaiblissement de notre conférence. Madame la Présidente, Madame la Secrétaire Générale, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, notre conférence n'est pas juste un laboratoire d'idées, c'est un organe d'action et de négociation. Nous sommes prêts à continuer à œuvrer avec l'ensemble des membres pour que la conférence du désarmement renoue avec sa vocation originelle et retrouve pleinement la place qui est la sienne dans le système des Nations Unies, c'est-à-dire un pilier sans lequel ce système risque l'effacement. Je vous remercie. Muchas gracias a su excelencia, el señor Nasser Bourita, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores, Cooperación Africana y Expatriados del Reino de Marruecos. Damos ahora, escucharemos ahora el mensaje de su excelencia, señor Simón Convenay, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Irlanda, a través de un mensaje pregrabado. Bienvenido, señor ministro. President. I congratulate Colombia on your assumption of the presidency. I assure you of Ireland's full cooperation and support. I had hoped to address the many important disarmament and non-proliferation challenges facing the world today. However, given the gravity of the situation, my statement will focus on only one issue. Ireland strongly condemns Russia's further invasion of Ukraine. It is a blatant violation of international law, including the UN Charter. By violating the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, Russia has brought war once again to European soil. With its military invasion of Ukraine and its aggressive nuclear rhetoric, Russia's actions threaten to undermine the global nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation regime. In January, President Putin, together with the heads of the other four nuclear weapon states, stated that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. This week, Russia has placed its nuclear forces on high alert status. This is a dangerous and irresponsible escalation. It heightens the risk of a catastrophic miscalculation. There can be no justification for threatening use of nuclear weapons. Nu nuclear weapons offer no security. Their use would result in devastating humanitarian consequences. 
I call on Russia to immediately revoke this order. I urge maximum restraint and de-escalation. Nuclear rhetoric must be avoided. It will only worsen an already dangerous and unpredictable situation. Ireland also reminds Belarus of its responsibilities to abide by international law, including as a non-nuclear weapon state under the NPT. The constitutional amendment to remove Belarus's non-nuclear status is of deep concern. President, Russia's extensive use of explosive weapons in populated areas in Ukraine raises grave concern for the protection of the civilian population. The situation is unfolding rapidly, but it is clear already that this conflict, including the use of heavy explosive weapons, is resulting in rising numbers of civilian casualties, including injuries, as well as destruction of vital infrastructure. Russia must take seriously its obligations to uphold international law. It must protect the civilian population from destruction of vital civilian infrastructure and services. For our part, Ireland will continue to champion the negotiation and adoption of a robust political declaration on explosive weapons in populated areas that directly addresses these harms. Mr. President, I'm alarmed at reports of the use of cluster munitions, including in the vicinity of schools and hospitals. The use of such indiscriminate and disproportionate weapons cannot be tolerated under any circumstances. The mounting human cost of this war is increasing daily and Russia must turn away from war and choose a path of dialogue and diplomacy, a path that is embodied by the UN and the work of this conference. The time to take this path is now. Thank you. Muchas gracias a su excelencia, señor Simón Coveney, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Irlanda, por su mensaje. Y vamos a suspender un momento la reunión para darle la bienvenida a su excelencia, señor Sigvenu Rau, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Polonia. Quisiera darle la bienvenida a nuestro distinguido invitado, su excelencia, señor Sigviniu Rao, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Polonia. Muchas gracias, excelencia, por dirigirse a la conferencia de desarme. Tiene usted la palabra, ministro. Madam President, distinguished delegates, we are meeting at critical juncture of the 21st century history. We are facing totally unjustified aggression of Russia, a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, a nuclear weapon possessor state against Ukraine. It is the gravest security situation since World War II. We condemn Russia's and Belarus' aggression in the strongest possible terms. We call all 
our like-minded partners around the world to stand against it. We confirm our unwavering support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. This context is and will be affecting all our discussions also on arms control, disarmament and non-proliferation in the months and years to come. It will be challenging to rebuild mutual trust and common understanding based upon critical principles of diplomacy and shared responsibility. This is not an optimistic message for the conference, whose efforts have been stalled since 1990s and clearly needs a boost. Perhaps it can help bring this conference back to the basic reasons of its existence, which is to prevent real wars, as we watch it today. Adoption by the Conference on Disarmament of the decision on its work for 2022 proves this body is able to work constructively. There are many pressing, many <coughs> pressing weapons of mass destruction, disarmament challenges that need to be addressed. First, the strategic stability situation after the extension of the, need of the new START treaty. Second, the joint comprehensive plan of action. And third, the strengthening of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty, the fundament of the entire nuclear non-proliferation system. In those difficult times, Poland will continue to contribute to works of all disarmament and non-proliferation fora. However, we cannot move on like nothing happened in Ukraine. This was this war. This war was orchestrated by the Russian president and its Belarusian counterpart puts all endeavors of international community related to peace and security under a question mark. Thank you. Muchas gracias a usted, señor ministro, por estar hoy en esta conferencia. Voy a suspender la reunión por un momento para despedir al señor ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Polonia. Excelencias, delegadas y delegados, quiero extender una bienvenida a nuestro siguiente invitado, su excelencia, Mr. Edgar Rinkevich, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Letonia. La conferencia lo escuchará ahora no. sí. en un video pregrabado. Your Excellency, I congratulate Colombia on assuming the presidency of the Conference on Disarmament, and I express Latvia's full support and cooperation. At this moment, we must speak with one voice, a voice that condemns blatant Russian aggression and upholds international norms. 
The conference has historically had a singular dedication to the cause of humanity and it has repeatedly united in one voice to pursue the most pressing matters. Your Excellency, we face an unprecedented proliferation of nuclear weapons. The rise of new technologies and increasing attempts to threaten with and use the very weapons of mass destruction to this conference fought to hard to eliminate from our civilization. It is unacceptable that chemical weapons have been used in recent years and that state and non-state actors are pursuing biological weapons for violent ends. It is equally absurd that we still must consider how an aggressive power might use these weapons in an unjustified invasion. However, we should not be surprised. We have been far too tolerant in punishing these violations. While we have been building our capacities and expertise, we have been moderating our enforcement. We have to bring the relevant parties to justice. Inaction only breeds the shamelessness of such actors. Your Excellency, the Biological and Toxin Convention is systematically underfunded and treated with apathy. We must recognize the importance of this convention and areas which efforts are lacking. The Chemical Weapons Convention has not been lacking in attention, but rather in practical enforcement. The EU autonomous sanctions regime is a good example of real actions. Actions on chemical and biological weapons are not enough. The fundamental threat remains nuclear war and Russia's aggressive behavior only increases it. We believe in a progressive approach to disarmament. However, we also must consider the security context and strategic stability. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons is the cornerstone of the international disarmament and non-proliferation regime. Therefore, we hope that the review conference can take place as soon as possible and provide space for needed progress, despite challenges posed by Russia. U.S. efforts in talks with Russia have been laudable, considering Russia's petulant behavior. Past and current violations prove that new instruments can only work if all nuclear weapons are included and if based upon undisputable verification. China should also join such talks. The entry into force of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and negotiations on a Fissile Material Cut-Off Treaty are obvious steps. We also cannot forget about regional proliferation challenges and crises such as Iran and North Korea, respectively. Your Excellency, with Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine, I must also mention the humanitarian cost of using conventional weapons. The horrific violence committed by Russia is destroying lives and crippling societies. This sadly vivid example proves that transparency and confidence-building instruments are in dire need of modernization. For arms control to be effective, all parties need to abide by the rules. Russia has proved itself as incapable of playing fair. We must take that into account and not risk the creation of parallel processes due to the impotence of this form. Your Excellency, we are in a truly difficult moment. We did not arrive at it by accident or mistake, but through the actions of certain states seeking to undermine the rules-based international order. However, the way forward is up to us. We can decide how strong, ambitious and successful we will be. Thank you very much. Gracias a usted, señor ministro de Latvia. Doy ahora la palabra, excelencia, señores y señoras, a su excelencia, señor Yoshimasa Hayasashi, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Japón, a través de un video pregrabado. Madam President, distinguished colleagues, I would like to express our appreciation and reaffirm our support to Your Excellency Ambassador Alicia Victoria Alang Olmos, President of the Confluence on Disarmament, as well as Madam Secretary General of the CD and her team for their valuable work during the time of the COVID-19 pandemics. Madam President, the CD is the only multilateral negotiating forum on disarmament with the participation of key stakeholders, including all nuclear weapon states and nuclear-possessing countries. 
the international community should revitalize this disarmament forum by breaking the prolonged stalemate and building upon our past discussions. In this regard, Japan welcomes the adoption of the decision on the work of the CD for 2022 and the efforts made during the presidency of both China and Colombia. Madam President, with regard to the situation in Ukraine, the series of Russia's acts are in violation of international law and an infringement of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Any unilateral change of the status quo by force is totally unacceptable. This is an extremely serious situation that shakes the foundation of international order, not only in Europe, but also in Asia. Along with our G7 partners, we strongly condemn the action taken by Russia. Japan also expresses serious concerns over North Korea's continued development of nuclear and missile capabilities, including the latest launch of ILBM-class ballistic missile on January 30th. It poses a serious challenge to the international non-proliferation regime. Also, North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile activities are clear violation of a series of UN Security Council resolutions. Japan reaffirms its strong commitment to the complete, verifiable, and irreversible dismantlement of North Korea's all weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile of all ranges. Japan urges North Korea to abide by all relevant UN Security Council resolutions and return at an early date to full compliance with the NPT and IAEA safeguards. The security environment surrounding Japan is rapidly becoming even more severe. The build-up of nuclear forces in a non-transparent manner and the technological advancement of nuclear weapons delivery systems that adversely affect Japan's security and regional stability are only a few examples of such activities. Madam President, against this backdrop, we attach importance to slowly discussing ways of arms control, including those of increasing transparency, while ensuring a desirable security environment for Japan. We will continue to discuss with relevant states in order to advance arms control and disarmament efforts that ensure the involvement of relevant countries. In Japan will also continue to call on all states to enhance confidence-building measures, such as increasing the transparency of their military capabilities and policies. From this perspective, Japan welcomes the fact that the United States has unilaterally resumed releasing its nuclear weapons stockpile data. Madam President, as the only country to have suffered atomic bombings during war, Japan is strongly committed to leading international efforts toward a world without nuclear weapons. The possible reversal of the continued downward trend of the number of nuclear weapons since its peak during the Cold War is another deeply worrying factor. To avoid further deterioration of the current status, Japan reiterates the importance of the immediate commencement of negotiations on a treaty banning the production of fissile material for nuclear weapons based on the Shannon mandate. Pending the commencement of negotiations, Japan also calls for a moratorium on fissile material production. Moreover, Japan urges all states to sign and ratify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which has not entered into force for the past 25 years. Pending its entry into force, Japan also urges all relevant states to declare or maintain existing moratoriums on nuclear weapon test explosion. Madam President, it has become increasingly important 
under the current severe security situation that the international community maintains and strengthens the NPT. Japan has made a series of efforts to this end, such as the submission of the United Nations General Assembly resolutions on the elimination of nuclear weapons, as well as close cooperation through the non-proliferation and disarmament initiative and the Stockholm initiative. At the next review conference, Japan will spare no effort to contribute to the adoption of a final document. Prime Minister Kishida announced the establishment of the international group of eminent persons for a world without nuclear weapons. Under his leadership, Japan aims to foster further international discussions by gaining a possible form of engagement of incumbent and former political leaders around the globe. Madam President, at this difficult time, it is urgently needed to reinvigorate the CD to build confidence. Japan looks forward to further cooperating with the member states and the president throughout this endeavor. Thank you. Muchas gracias al señor ministro Yashi Yoshima, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores del Japón. Procederé ahora a darle la palabra a su excelencia, el embajador Ishiro Guasawara de Japón, para complementar lo dicho en el video. giving me the floor. I would like to take the floor to provide additional statement with regard to the statement made by Foreign Minister Mr. Yoshimasa Hayashi of Japan based on the latest developments since its recording on February 25th, including the statement made by Russian Foreign Minister Mr. Sergei Lavrov yesterday at the conference on disarmament. With regard to the situation in Ukraine, Russia's recent aggression against Ukraine is an attempt to unilaterally change the status quo by force and shakes the foundation of international order. It constitutes a serious violation of international law and is totally unacceptable. Japan condemns it in the strongest terms Russia has raised the alert level of the preparation of the nuclear deterrence units, which is a dangerous act that may lead to further destabilization of the situations. Nuclear weapons, once used, cause extensive and tremendous devastations. Such Russia's action counters the aspiration demonstrated in the joint statement on preventing nuclear war and avoiding arms race issued by the leaders of the five nuclear weapon states, which jointly affirmed that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. President Putin should fulfill his own commitments. As the only country to have suffered atomic bombings during war, Japan is fully aware of the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of the use of nuclear weapons. We stress once again that such tragedy must never be repeated again. Regarding North Korea, I would like to add that on February 27th, they launched a ballistic missile again in violation of a series of UN Security Council resolutions. The series of North Korea's actions, including this launch, threatened the peace and security of the international community and Japan. Strongly Japan strongly condemns these launches. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Muchas gracias, señor embajador. Tiene ahora eh, la palabra su excelencia, señor Ioannis Casouluris, ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Chipre, a través de un video pregrabado. Tiene usted la palabra, señor ministro. Madam President, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, 
allow me at the outset to congratulate you on the assumption of the presidency of the Conference on Disarmament and express Cyprus's support and cooperation with you and the future presidents of this year's conference. Madam President, it is with distinct pleasure that Cyprus has again the opportunity to address this august forum. After two years of absence, I wish in this respect to commend the sterling efforts undertaken by B6 and personally by the previous president of the conference, Ambassador Si Long of China, in approving all the requests submitted by UN member states that are not members of the conference. Cyprus is honored to resume its long-standing position as an observer of the conference. I wish to underscore our firm position not to let bilateral issues impinge upon the decision-making process of the conference pertaining to observership requests beyond being irrelevant to the subject matter of the conference, such approaches unnecessarily politicize the discussions of the conference and harm our collective endeavors in the conference. Madam President, Cyprus attaches great value at the role of the Conference on Disarmament as the world's only multilateral disarmament treaty negotiating forum. We support efforts aiming at overcoming the current impasse. We congratulate the tireless efforts of the P6 and led to the adoption of a decision of the work of 1922 and establish five subsidiary bodies. It is our strong conviction that political will, increased cooperation, show of trust and confidence are indispensable to re-energize the work of the conference in order to retain its original and primary role, that is to negotiate disarmament and arms control international agreements. Accounting the security challenges the international community currently faces, the conference items of the agenda are more relevant and its role more pertinent than ever before. Madam President, Cyprus is a staunch supporter of an effective and fun functional treaty-based international system. Being a small state, Cyprus relies on a collective, rules-centered, legally binding security system, which is forged by the principles of respect of the international law genuine cooperation and uh, shared responsibility. To this effect, Cyprus is constructively engaged in actively participating in the various international and regional processes on the critical issues of disarmament, arms control, and non-proliferation. In, in this context, Cyprus is a member state of the Non-Proliferation Treaty is unwaveringly committed to the full implementation and universalization of this Langman Treaty. We long for a fruitful 10th review conference to strengthen the non-proliferation treaty, further explore the long-term consequences of any nuclear weapons use, and focus on nuclear energy safety while recognizing the right of states to engage in nuclear energy programs, I wish to reiterate that such activities must remain peaceful in nature and be exercised with utmost caution and transparency, cognizant of the risks that a natural disaster may cause affecting local populations as well as populations of neighboring countries. In reference to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, Cyprus considers this treaty of high importance and its entry into force of top priority. Cyprus has ratified the CTBT and we urge other states to do the same. In the same vein, we attach great importance to the immediate commencement of negotiations for the fissile material 
cut-off treaty in the Conference on Disarmament, and therefore encourage all parties to show flexibility and facilitate the negotiating process. Cyprus welcomes the announced agreement between the United States and the Russian Federation to extend the new START treaty for an additional period of five years. We also welcome the joint statement issued by the leaders of the five nuclear weapon states on preventing nuclear war and avoiding arms races and we second the position that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. Those are positive signs showcasing the will of the superpowers to build an environment of mutual understanding and cooperation and take collective measures to address issues of critical nature as those relating to security, thus promoting our shared goal to maintain international peace and security. We lastly, look, lastly like to add Cyprus's voice to the many of those advocating for an amendment of the rules of procedure with a view to reflect equal references to women and men. We all bear our heavy individual and collective responsibilities to improve the security and well-being of our societies. And we do recognize the centrality of the Conference on Disarmament to this end. It is in this spirit, Madam President, that I wish to assure you and the members of the Conference on Disarmament of Cyprus's unequivocal support to achieve progress in this conference. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias al señor Ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Chipre, Su Excelencia, señor Ioannis Casoludis. Paso ahora a, a dar la palabra a Su Excelencia, señor Jonathan Seviov, primer viceministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Estonia, a través de un video pregramado. pregrabado. Tiene usted la palabra, señor viceministro. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, today Europe faces a large-scale war. Estonia condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's overt and extensive military attack on Ukraine. There is no justification for Russia's actions. This is a clear violation of international law and norms, a grave violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and a crime against the people of Ukraine. Russia alone bears the responsibility for this attack. Russia is the aggressor and Ukraine the victim. There can be no impunity for Russia. The international community must send a strong and united political message condemning Russia's illegal actions. This is not an attack against Ukraine only. It is an attack against democracy, the rule of law, and the right of any nation to make its sovereign choices. The security of all of Europe is at stake. The Conference on Disarmament is the world's single multilateral forum for disarmament negotiations. But let me be clear. For as long as Russia's inexcusable attack against Ukraine is allowed to continue, no conference on disarmament can ever really be successful. Mr. President, Estonia is hopeful that this year we will finally be able to hold the 10th review conference of the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. We need to ensure the successful outcome of the conference and strengthen its role as a major multilateral instrument of international security. Estonia shares the ultimate goal of a world without nuclear weapons pursued in a realistic and responsible way. Estonia supports all international efforts towards the entry into force of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and urges all states, particularly the Annex II states, to sign and ratify the treaty without further delay. The upcoming review conference of the treaty serves a perfect occasion to this end. Estonia welcomes the extension of the new START treaty. We hope it will lead to negotiations on broader follow-on agreements, which would cover and limit various types of nuclear weapons and have strong, effective and credible verification mechanisms. We call on China 
to contribute actively to these processions. Mr. President, Estonia has continuously supported the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, and the International Atomic Energy Agency's long-term mission of verifying and monitoring Iran's nuclear-related commitments. The JCPOA is a key element of the global nuclear non-proliferation architecture. The role of the agency's system of safeguards in strengthening the nuclear non-proliferation regime and promoting the responsible development of peaceful applications of nuclear technology is essential. We urge Iran to continue its collaboration with the agency in resolving all pending questions regarding its safeguards obligations. Mr. President, the determination of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to advance its weapons technology, including its ambition to develop missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads, is a matter of grave concern. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea must abandon its weapons of mass destruction program in a complete, verifiable, and irreversible manner, in line with its obligations under the United Nations Security Council resolutions. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, let me conclude by extending my best wishes to all the presidents of the 2022 session. You can count on Estonia's full support. Muchas gracias al señor ministro de viceministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Estonia, su excelencia señor Jonathan Seviov. La conferencia ahora escuchará a su excelencia la honorable Maris Payne, ministra para la mujer y la ministra de Relaciones Exteriores de Australia a través de un video pregrabado. Bienvenida, ministra. President, distinguished ministers, ambassadors, excellencies. It is my pleasure to address the Conference on Disarmament again. Much has changed since I last addressed the conference in early 2019. The pandemic has affected all our lives and had a critical impact on public health, on our economies and the secure fabric of our respective societies. But the last two years have not changed the fundamental calculus on disarmament and arms control. That calculus is this. The disarmament and arms control regimes that underpin our international rules-based order remain critical to preserving global peace. As we have seen over the past few weeks, we cannot take international peace and security for granted nor can we always rely on nations negotiating in good faith. Australia joins the international community in condemning Russia for its unprovoked, unlawful, unwarranted and unjustified act of aggression against Ukraine. Russia has chosen war. We call on Russia to cease its unlawful and unprovoked actions. Russia must cease its invasion and withdraw its military from Ukraine. Russia's actions are a flagrant breach of the UN Charter's prohibition on the use of force for territorial gain. We reiterate Australia's full support for Ukraine's independence and territorial integrity, the bedrock principles of a rules-based world order. President Putin's nuclear threats and intimidation are designed to brutally raise the stakes in an already egregious assault on legitimate sovereignty. Russia's nuclear threats are a willful abuse of provisions of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and a clear demonstration of the dangers these weapons pose to us all. The message we should be sending is clear. There is an urgent need for practical progress on nuclear risk reduction, nuclear arms control and nuclear disarmament. President Australia is proud of the role we play in this forum and in others to build global stability, confidence in collective security and mutual trust. Australia is fully committed to making sustained, practical contributions in arms control, non-proliferation and disarmament. I have established a new office for arms control and counter-proliferation within the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Led at ambassador level, this office will focus our efforts with new momentum. Progressing a treaty to ban the production of fissile material for nuclear weapons remains a top priority for Australia. We can see no good reason not to begin this effort now in a serious and determined manner. In space, 
threats or the perception of threats against space systems contribute to our growing sense of geopolitical instability and insecurity. We must seize the opportunity presented by the new open-ended working group on reducing space threats to develop a common understanding of what constitutes responsible behaviours in space and more importantly what constitutes irresponsible and unlawful activity. In pursuing global security, gender equality is a key value and top foreign policy priority for Australia. We must also add weight to the Women, Peace and Security agenda. We know the benefits that diverse participation can bring to disarmament, arms control and non-proliferation. We hope the conference will this year progress the proposal initiated by Australia to make the rules of this conference gender neutral, a small but meaningful step towards the equal, full and meaningful participation of women in multilateral disarmament. President, we are encouraged by the talks in Vienna on a return to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action and Australia calls on all opportunities to ensure this opportunity for a lasting diplomatic solution is not missed. Australia remains deeply concerned about North Korea's ongoing, provocative and unlawful activities, including its willful disregard for UN Security Council resolutions. We strongly condemn the continued development of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles in North Korea. We urge North Korea to comply with UN Security Council resolutions and to return to diplomacy and dialogue without preconditions. With the 10th Review Conference of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons again postponed, we must not lose sight of the Treaty's role as the cornerstone of the global nuclear non-proliferation regime, nor our collective responsibility to preserve and strengthen it. Australia welcomed the January Statement by P5 leaders as a statement of commitment to disarmament and the prevention of nuclear war. Russia must be reminded of its commitment. However, it is clear we can't rest with words. We need tangible action. If not us, then whom? And if not now, then when? Maintaining momentum and working towards the Treaty's ultimate goal of a world free of nuclear weapons remains the priority. This is what we agreed to when we signed and ratified the treaty in good faith and without intentions of evasion. Our goal requires us to respect international rules, to build consensus across groupings and a commitment to a genuine pathway. President, the Conference on Disarmament has played a vital role in advancing global peace and stability in previous decades. Australia believes this key element of the disarmament architecture can again play such a role especially in these dark days when the use of, nu use of nuclear weapons is openly threatened by a nuclear weapons state against a non-nuclear weapons state. To this end, Australia stands ready to think and act creatively and constructively. We urge others to join this important endeavour. Thank you. Agradezco mucho a la ministra de la Mujer y de las Relaciones Exteriores de Australia y ahora damos la bienvenida a su excelencia, el señor Sedat Onal, viceministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Turquía, a través de un video pregrabado. Tiene usted la palabra, señor viceministro. Madam President, dear colleagues, let me first congratulate Colombia on assuming the presidency of the Conference on Disarmament. We are now facing the worst security crisis in Europe after the Cold War. Agreements and commitments that once contributed to our collective security are being challenged. In this connection, I would like to reiterate our support to Ukraine's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political unity. In these testing times, cooperation in arms control and disarmament has become all the more crucial. As the only multilateral negotiation framework in its field, the Conference on Disarmament remains relevant. For the conference to be effective, its negotiating mandate needs to be restored. 
Once this is realized, the city could start negotiations on a non-discriminatory and verifiable treaty to ban the production of fissile material, which continues to be one of our priorities. Dear colleagues, let me reiterate Turkey's position regarding key instruments in disarmament. We see the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, as the corner store of the disarmament and non-proliferation regime. We hope that the review conference can be held soon and produce tangible results. Turkey takes part in non-proliferation and disarmament initiative, which has produced a set of recommendations for the review conference. While calling on all relevant parties to ratify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, we welcome the extension of the New START Treaty. We support all efforts aimed at revival of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction remains a priority. We encourage countries of the Middle East to continue the dialogue on this direction. Dear participants, the re-emergence of use of chemical weapons is a cause for grave concern. The Syrian regime has repeatedly used chemical weapons as confirmed by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. As a member of the Executive Council of the Organization, Turkey will continue to keep this issue in the agenda. Finally, every state has the right to use and have access to the other space for peaceful purposes. Within this understanding, we co-sponsored the relevant UN General Assembly resolution, and we will engage constructively with the open-ended working group. We will continue to support the Conference on Disarmament in the fulfillment of its mission. Thank you. Muchas gracias al señor ministro de Relaciones Exteriores de Turquía. Ahora le quiero invitar a su excelencia, señor Mehdi Ali Abad, representante permanente adjunto de la República Islámica de Irán ante la Oficina de las Naciones Unidas en Ginebra, a dirigirse a la conferencia. Tiene usted el uso de la palabra. Quiero excusarme con, la, con el representante de Irán y decirle que estamos avanzados una hora. Entonces procederé a darle la palabra al embajador de Alemania que ya se encuentra en la sala, su excelencia Thomas Goebel, embajador permanente de Alemania en Ginebra. Tiene usted la palabra, embajador. Madam President, um, Madam President, distinguished delegates, the high-level segment of the CD this year is taking place at the very moment of a military escalation we have not experienced in Europe for over generations time. Almost one week ago, President Putin decided to abandon diplomacy and to brutally attack Ukraine. This aggression by Russia is a flagrant and unprecedented violation of the most fundamental principles in international law and the UN Charter. Instead of embracing the special responsibility borne by Russia as a permanent member of the United Se Nations Security Council to uphold international law and the UN Charter, Rus Russia attacks its sovereign neighbor Ukraine, even questions its very right of existence and threatens retaliation against any state defending Ukraine and thereby the rules-based order. 
Germany condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's illegal aggression against Ukraine. It is entirely unjustified and unprovoked. Germany condemns also the contribution by Belarus to this aggression. Germany demands that Russia immediately ceases all military operations against Ukraine and withdraws its troops and equipment from Ukrainian territory without precondition and without delay. Germany demands Russia to respect the sovereignty, territory, territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. Together with our partners in the European Union and around the world, Germany has reacted swiftly and firmly to this blatant violation of international law by Russia. We have adopted an unprecedented package of sanctions. We are ready to provide shelter to refugees from Ukraine and to deliver humanitarian supplies. And we support Ukraine militarily to defend itself in line with Article 51 of the Charter. Today's vote at the United Nations General Assembly is thus crucial. The international community must speak up against this unprovoked military action by Russia violating the core principles of the UN Charter. Ukraine has our full solidarity. Germany stands with Ukraine unwavering and determined. Madam President, by enhancing the alert status of its nuclear forces, Russia has taken another escalatory and is irresponsible step. This measure, alongside implicit threats, contradicts Russia's repeated assertions that the nuclear war must never be fought. It also undermines Russia's credibility as responsible nuclear weapon state. Only two months ago, we all welcomed the joint statement of the P5 in this regard, taking it, taking it as an encouraging signal as we prepare for the 10th NP NPT review conference. It is difficult to discuss arms control in such a moment when post commitments and engagements are put into question or are simply broken. But, it's, but it is also evident that we must defend even more vigorously the rules-based international order today. And in this regard, in this effort, the conference on disarmament is crucial reigning in war, upholding diplomacy, creating an international order based on the rule of law, that has always been its mission. We recommend your efforts, Madam President, and the work of your predecessor as President of the CD this year, Ambassador Lee Song of China, for bringing the conference back to work as soon as possible. The establishment of subsidiary bodies should allow to start with substantive work on all the core issues on the agenda especially making progress towards the commencement of negotiations on an FMCT, which still represents the next practical step long overdue towards living up to the NPT. Madam President, however remote it appears today, our vision remains unchanged, a world without nuclear weapons. This vision is an obligation to. It goes back to the first ever UN General Assembly resolution. It is rooted in the NPT and many political commitments taken thereunder. These past commitments matter and they must be worked on. Together with our partners in the Stockholm Initiative, we have presented a roadmap, 22 stepping stones to advance nuclear disarmament. We do so while, and today more than ever, we are rock solid in our commitment to our responsibilities as a NATO ally including in the Alliance nuclear sharing arrangements, which, in, which are in complete conformity with the obligations under the NPT. Madam President, in our world, small arms and light weapons represent the real weapons of mass destruction. Poorly regulated arms exports lead to diversion, thus fueling conflicts and causing tremendous human suffering. In establishing rules and regulations for the trade of arms, the ATT is building up a firewall against this logic. Germany assumed the presidency of the arms trade treaty this year to contribute to the strengthening of this treaty and we call on all states which are not yet a member of this important treaty to join it soon. Germany stands also ready to ta take broader responsibilities in the fight against anti-personal landmines 
in presenting its candidature for the next presidency of the Ottawa Convention. We recommend you, Madam President, for the able leadership also in regard to this convention this year. More efforts are needed to establish the rules necessary to, to address future challenges. First, we must work on rules regarding lethal autonomous weapons. 2021 was a lost year in this regard. In 2022, we must make progress. Germany is looking forward to the GGE starting next week. Second, we need to strengthen the Biological Weapons Convention. Germany will focus its G7 presidency on that goal. And third, rules for responsible behavior are needed to secure the sustainable use of outer space. Germany is strongly committed to the prevention of an arms race in outer space and the preservation of a safe, secure and sustainable space environment. Germany will contribute to this UN process in the work of the open-ended working group and we call on all states to do the same. Madam President, common international rules benefit all states. Germany will spare no efforts to defend these principles and to strengthen the rules-based order, including the global arms control architecture. In this regard, the Conference of Disarmament remains the unique forum which we have to preserve, to develop, and which we have to bring to work again, more urgently than ever. Thank you. Muchas gracias al señor embajador de Alemania, doctor Thomas Gobel, por su intervención. En este momento suspenderé la reunión por 10 minutos aproximadamente para esperar a la señora representante de permanentemente de Noruega quien todavía no se encuentra en el salón por estar adelantada la agenda. Muchas gracias por su comprensión.
eh, reanudamos la conferencia ya con la presencia de nuestra siguiente invitada, su excelencia señora Tina Morch Smith, representante permanente de Noruega ante la Oficina de las Naciones Unidas en Ginebra. Señora Tina, su excelencia, querida embajadora, tiene la palabra. Thank you, Madam President. Norway remains committed to working to achieve a world without nuclear weapons, and we intend to step up our efforts to promote nuclear disarmament. Any use of nuclear weapons would have global ramifications. The humanitarian consequences would be catastrophic. We must never forget that ultimately disarmament is about protecting people's lives. Russia's unprovoked, unjustified and irresponsible attack on Ukraine has created a situation in Europe unlike any we have seen since the Second World War. Norway strongly condemns Russia's aggression. We also condemn Belarus' facilitation of this invasion. We call on Russia to immediately and unconditionally stop its attack and withdraw its forces. Madam President, the deteriorating global security environment calls for renewed efforts to reach our common goal. We have a responsibility to make progress on nuclear disarmament. The Conference on Disarmament has seen remarkable achievements in the past. After more than two decades of deadlock in the CD, we need to resume substantive work that leads to new disarmament negotiations. The Russian war against Ukraine and reckless, dangerous rhetoric on nuclear weapons runs counter to the purpose and spirit of this conference. It provides a very bleak backdrop for our work on disarmament and must be addressed. Nevertheless, the current situation has shown us that non-proliferation, armed control and disarmament has become even more important. The recently adopted decision on work of the conference gives hope that progress is still possible in the CD. The extension of New START and the establishment of a US-Russia strategic stability dialogue last year was highly welcome. We also welcome the P5 joint statement in January affirming that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We must build on this momentum. Madam President, the full implementation of the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty remains an overarching goal. It is important that the 10th review conference of the NPT is convened soon. We must do our utmost to ensure that this conference strengthens the treaty along all three pillars. Nuclear disarmament verification is essential for future arms reductions. Norway will continue its engagement in this area, including by chairing the UN expert group on verification of nuclear disarmament. The first session of the GGE has just been concluded. We are pleased to note a substantial engagement in this work from an increasing number of states. But we must do more to move the nuclear disarmament agenda forward. The Stockholm Initiative is a well designed to advance the disarmament pillar of the NPT. It has put forward concrete and action-oriented recommendations. We are hoping to mobilize broad support for this initiative, including from nuclear weapon states. A separate proposal from this group addresses the need for a broad range of nuclear risk reduction measures. This includes concerns about the devastating humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons. Norway will work to increase the focus on humanitarian consequences in line with the consensus final document of the 2010 NPT Review Conference. Madam President, the principle of irreversibility when implementing nuclear disarmament measures is broadly supported, but it lacks a unified understanding. Norway will work with the United Kingdom to initiate a multilateral dialogue on how to apply the principle in practical terms. The aim is to increase confidence and predictability in disarmament processes. We urge the entry into force of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Progress must be made on the negotiation and conclusion of an effectively verifiable fissile material cut-off treaty, FMCT. Madam President, in addition to intensifying our efforts to promote nuclear disarmament and strategic stability, Norway will maintain its engagement in nuclear arms control. We will also continue our efforts to promote gender equality and diverse participation in disarmament processes and support initiatives to involve the younger generation in this work. Thank you, Madam President. Muchas gracias a la señora embajadora de Noruega.
Y ahora damos la palabra a su excelencia, señor Mehdi Ali Abadi, representante permanente adjunto de la República Islámica de, Arán, de Irán. ¿Tiene usted la palabra, su excelencia? Thank you, Madam President. It is an honor to speak on behalf of the Islamic Republic of Iran before the Conference on Disarmament high-level segment. Madam President, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, as a full-fledged qualitative and quantitative nuclear arms race is underway, the international disarmament machineries are in serious jeopardy. Multilateralism and diplomacy are under unprecedented attacks. The risk of nuclear use is raising, which leads to the fact that the overall international security environment is deteriorating. At the same time, the rise in conventional military expenditures and arms sale in many parts of the world is alarming, and the already volatile region of the West Asia is flooded with more sophisticated weapons from the Western countries, which put the Middle East in the top list of destination of weapons and fueling the ongoing co conflicts across the region. The role, nature, and mandate of the CD is more relevant than ever. The Conference on Disarmament, as the sole multilateral negotiating forum, has the mandate of negotiating legally binding instruments in the field of disarmament in accordance with the final documents of the SSOD1. The CD's decade-long statement, which has prevented it from fulf fulfilling its mandate, could be reversed if all members, particularly the nuclear weapon states, demonstrate political will and live up to their commitments on the nuclear disarmament. Due to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of the nuclear weapons and the gravity of the danger posed by those weapons and their near continued existence, we believe that nuclear disarmament should be the top priority. In this regard, the CD should agree on establishing an ad hoc committee to start negotiation on nuclear disarmament as soon as possible. Madam President, we took, we took note the recent decision adopted by consensus on the work of the CD for 2022 session. However, that decision is indeed far from our expectations and goal, i.e. a balanced and comprehensive program of work that would enable and allow this body to, a state to a start negotiating legally binding instrument on the basis of its agenda, in particular, a started negotiation on nuclear disarmament. Nonetheless, the decision confirms that lack of political will is the root cause of that statement. And when members show political will and flexibilities, the CD can advance its, its substantive work and repeat its past remarkable achievements. Madam President, Article 6 of the MPT has committed nuclear weapon state for nuclear disarmament. The recent joint affirmation that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought must now be translated into concrete action towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons. Empty words with no actions severe serve no purpose. The continued existence of nuclear weapons further aggravate tensions in the international security environment and represent a grave threat to humanity. We stress the unequivocal undertaking of the nuclear weapon states to accomplish the total elimination of their nuclear arsenals leading to nuclear disarmament. We reject the notion that these obligations are conditional, as suggested in the statement of nuclear weapon states. The de deteriorating current global security environments reinforce the need and the urgency of in implementation of those obligations. We call for the urgent fulfillment of the obligation and commitments within the framework of the MPT, which remains valid until implemented. Madam President, Non-nuclear weapon states decided to join the MPT with the understanding that they would not be the target of use or threat to use of nuclear weapons. Therefore, in the resolution for the adoption of the MPT, the General Assembly requested the negotiation body to consider urgently the proposal that the nuclear weapon state should give an assurance that they would not use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states without nuclear weapons on their territories. The purpose of the MPT is to preserve the security of all, not the nuclear weapons monopoly of a few. 
In this regard, Iran is a victim of a weapons of mass destruction that still suffers the, the wounds of use of chemical weapons by Saddam's regime with the assistance of some Western countries during the 1980s reiterates that the only guarantee against the use or threat of use of nuclear weapons is their total, irreversible, and verifiable elimination in accordance with Article 6 of the NPT. Pending that, the non-nuclear weapon states are entitled and have the right to enjoy unconditional, universal, irreversible, and legally binding assurances against the use or threat of use of such weapons. And uh, at the same time, nuclear weapon states do have the obligation to provide credible and effective legally binding security assurances to the non-nuclear weapon states. The CD should pursue the conclusion of a universal, unconditional, and legally binding instrument on security assurances, assurances to non-nuclear weapon states as a matter of priority. Madam President, distinguished colleagues, the 1995 resolution on the Middle East WMDF said was one of the main elements of the package, which led to the indefinite extension of the MPT at the 1995 MPT Review and Extension Conference. The international efforts to establish a nuclear weapon-free zone in the Middle East that was first initiated by Iran in early 1970s has been effectively blocked by the U.S. and its allies as a part of their acquiescence towards the real source of proliferation in the region, i.e. the Israeli regime that keeps accumulating all kinds of weapons of mass destruction without being a party to any international legally binding disarmament instrument and without being subject to any accountability, safeguards, or verification mechanism. We call upon those states that have always closed their eyes on every atrocity of the, this regime to the quiet, their double standards approach and urge Israel to join the MPT as a non-nuclear party and place all its nuclear facilities under the IEA's full safeguards and verification. The 10th review conference of the MPT, though has been postponed due to the pandemic several times, must be seen as a new opportunity to adopt by consensus effective measures for the full realization of the Article 6 obligations of that treaty, as well as the Middle East weapons of mass destruction free zone unfulfilled promise. Madam President, let me conclude by saying that the decision adopted recently to establish subsidiary bodies for the Conference on Disarmament session in 2022 to advance substantive work on the agenda items is a good basis and a positive step in the right direction. We hope that the subsidiary bodies will be able to find common uh, denominators on the issues at hand and lay the grounds for negotiating legally binding instruments disarmament instrument, and we are ready to work with you, Madam President, and all other presidents of the Conference on Disarmament, as well as the coordinators and all delegations toward that purpose. I thank you, Madam President. Muchas gracias al Su Excelencia, Representante Permanente Adjunto de la República Islámica de Irán. De esta manera, terminamos la sesión de la mañana. La próxima reunión tendrá lugar esta tarde a las 15 horas cuando reanudaremos nuestro segmento de alto nivel y también donaré la palabra a las delegaciones que lo quieran ejercer, su que quieran ejercer su derecho a hablar. Muchas gracias y nos vemos a las 3 de la tarde.